Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Cinema Wave podcast here at the Culture Wave Media Network, and we are here to talk to you guys about the Season 5 Part 2 premiere of Yellowstone. I am one of your hosts. My name is Darren Scalamoni. I am joined this time by Liz Seiko. Hello, everybody. And we're heading back to the ranch. Come back. In Montana. <laughs> we haven't talked about the show on uh, our channel yet, um, but this was a show that we both discussed, and you had said that you you were caught up on the show. You had binged it. Mm -hmm. which is a different model than how I have watched the show. I watched the show with my whole family when it started in season one, which I'm trying to think now. I think it was like 2017, 2018. Might might be a little after that, but I feel like it's been on for a long time. Mm -hmm. And there was a huge gap between season five, part one and season five, part two. And we could address this at the top because it's the most obvious part of the reason. It might be part of the reason why the numbers were so big for this show, which we'll get into as well. But uh, Kevin Costner who's the show's patriarch and the central character of the show, John Dutton. He is the uh, Tony Soprano of Montana, essentially. <laughs> and he is gone. And we know he's yeah. gone based on, it was a very public falling out with him and the creator, Taylor Sheridan, who's now like Paramount's poster child. Like he does every major show on Paramount is show run by Taylor Sheridan. It's Yellowstone, 1923, mayor of Kingstown, lioness, uh Bass Reeves like everything is Taylor Sheridan and they had um a creative disagreement they had a financial disagreement and Costner did not return for season five part two and so everybody knew that his character of John was going to die we were just kind of waiting to see what would happen and how they addressed it mm -hmm. and they do within the first as, as soon as the show it's opens the first scene it's like uh, police cars everywhere outside of like the big home or not the ranch home, but like his, uh, what is he? The mayor? Yes. He's the mayor the of Montana like, at this point. Yeah. Like home, there's police tape everywhere. Um, the crime scene stuff. And so, you know, every right away you're like, Oh my God, he died already. Like we were going right into this. Yeah. Um, which I guess we could talk about, like, how did you feel about them starting off right away with that? Well, I think that the hard thing with it is that there's no perfect way to do this no. when something like this happens. Um, for me, I mean, it's we talked about it a little bit before we started recording. Kevin Costner, to me, was so much of a part of what the show was and why it was successful. Um, like, I remember when this show first debuted, my grandmother, who's no longer with us, but she was a huge fan of Kevin Costner, like loved him as an actor. And the appeal of wanting to see this and this was kind of in the time where it was like right before all the streamers started like hitting their strides and things but all the cable networks were trying their hand at like scripted dramas mm. and paramount network was a new channel it was originally spike tv and paramount that's literally what the channel was and then paramount owned it and they turned it into this prestige drama network and yellowstone was the first show they came out with and it was did like gangbusters like everybody loved the show and Costner was nominated for two Emmys for the show. So losing his character in general was going to be something that was going to be hard for a lot of people. But there's still a lot of appeal to the show. People love Beth and Rip. Um, some people are into the cowboy culture that the show kind of represents and brings upon itself and the politics that come with it. But for me, as soon as it happens, you already feel – and when you go throughout the episode, there's like a deflating feeling of like something feels off about this. Um, and it's obvious because they have to continue mm -hmm. with the show. It's so popular and they can't just end it with no John. And they obviously didn't want to pay or they didn't want to go about it. However, they were going to go about it with Costner. But for me, the way they handled it, I think was the best that they could have. Like there's no other way they could have done it, but I'm just upset. And I think the quality of the show has dipped over the last few seasons and I do think that Costner has been one of those consistencies throughout even the low points of the show because he's such a high quality actor. Mm. So not having him felt off to me. Um, the scene itself is fine. I think it plays exactly how it's supposed to. Um, I like the I like that we're getting it from the children's point of view um, with with Casey and Beth. I think that's really it's it's intriguing to see. What's going to happen? And then we know, which it's alluded to based on what happens at the end of part one of season five, that Jamie is is behind what occurs. So for me, it was it was handled as well as it could be. But I'm, I'm, I'm already missing John Dutton and we're one episode in. So 
I don't know how to feel about it. What about you? I have a very more positive tone about it. Okay. I was really happy that they started it off this way and just kind of ripped the Band-Aid off and was like, we're throwing the audience back into the drama. I do think that was smart. Seated. They had to they had to get it out of the way quickly because yeah. if not, it was going to kind of like Lop linger around. over yeah. the episode the whole entire time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, also, it's like the part one ended on such a boring tone of just like. They didn't have any solid ending. Everybody was just kind of like, oh, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do this now. I'm doing here. Like, see you guys later. Um, and so if they did that, like, meandering feeling again, I think people would have really just been like, oh, God, this is going to suck. But I I was really excited. I was interested. Obviously, I think people do know kind of, like, where it's going to go. But I think that the acting in that first episode was killer. Um which I think is a testament to Yellowstone. The writing, I guess, could dip a little bit, but I think that they just have a strong cast that know who their characters are and are able to deliver interesting and powerful performances, which makes people still love them. I think that that's a really fair take because I think that the biggest thing for me was the writing. Mm -hmm. I think that the writing is constantly dipping, and I think it's just getting worse. But I do agree with you. I think that these people, these actors have played these characters now for such a long time yeah. that they completely are aware of exactly not only who they are as, as their characters, but full, like they probably know their characters better than any of these directors that are coming in to do this. Because 100%. Taylor Sheridan's not directing all of these episodes. You're having different directors come in every single season now with a show that's been lasting for years. Mm -hmm. And there was so much discussion based on how they were going to do this because there was also a pretty big gap between part one and part two well premiere wise it was five, two years which is crazy it's crazy that's for the same season that's crazy it's wild and i think that part of me almost wishes though like that's why i'm like if you were gonna wait that long you should have just waited for costner and you should have just ended it the way it should have been i'm fine what do, with this what character. do you mean waited for him what, like what i think that if there was a way they could have worked it out where even because i think we have to i want to fact check this but you had said before we started recording you you're pretty sure that part two is like a shorter half of the season i'm pretty sure because so this was technically season five episode nine, nine. yes because it's it's season five part b yeah yeah but I, mean, I can't picture them doing like 11, epi like making this a 20 well, it, episode season. If they were going to keep it even from from um, the first half of the season, they would have to do eight episodes. And this is episode one. So I could see them doing eight episodes. But for me, it's like I wish then even, even if you did it in, in a way where it's like, oh, let's bring let's bring John back for three or four episodes. No, I think that it's a total. Honestly, I think that it was like sticking it to him of being like, fine, you don't want to be a part of this. Fuck you. You're dead in the first five minutes. Literally, I think they didn't want anything to do with him because why would they want? And it's not like personal. It's just why would they want an actor and I a team understand. member on that team if they're not 100 percent giving their all when everybody else is? I do. And he's probably the biggest name making the biggest amount yeah. out of everybody. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. But I don't know. It's I'm 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 more interested on where they're going to be able to go, because I think that the thing is, is and you had talked about this, I think, just a minute ago where you're like, I think we can all see where things are going. And it's like, that's what I don't like about it. I like I don't like that. It's way too predictable. And I think that though the show is simple in its tone and the mm -hmm. way that it is like being addressed is it's a cable drama at the end of the day. Like that's well, what I it mean, is. I don't know exactly where it's going, but I think that there's key points. Like now it's established that Beth's storyline is going to be getting revenge and ruining Jamie. Yeah. Either both like literally ruining him or just like, like who knows? But then there's the whole other storyline of the um, pipeline that I think is all of a sudden going to come way back into play. And that's going to kind of be more of the storyline for Rip and Casey. Yeah. Because they're now the, they're handling the ranch completely. Yeah, exactly. And so I think that they're really going to have to get more involved in the politics of it. So I don't know. I think that it's kind of just picking up the story exactly where they left off just without Costner now. Yeah. I think that that's why I'm, I think that's the part I'm most intrigued by because we haven't seen the politicking side from either one of those characters a little bit from Casey. Cause he's been like the animal. Um, he's the head of the, um, yeah. What is it? The, uh, I don't know the name. I know the uh, wildlife preservation. Yeah. Something it like is. that. It's like wildlife officer or something. But 
it, at the same time, he's still and like. And even Beth in the in the episode, she's like, you know, you you're, you're you, a part of you're the a part of it. government. You, you can, can do call this. them. You can do this. Yes. And so I think it's going to be much more about him kind of stepping into those shoes and taking the reins and being like a political figure, not to the extent probably of his father of being like mayor. Yeah. I don't know if I want to see Casey as like a po po politico. No, I, I don't, don't think he will. I don't yeah. think he has that well, like bonus. I, I think that's what I, I, I'm, a, I'm interested to see what they're going to do with Casey and Rip being the heads of the ranch. Because again, Casey actually isn't really, he can't be involved like directly with it because he's working with the government. Like it's literally going to be rips. True. So, which is fine because I think it, it was going in that direction anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, but then Jamie and Beth are so heavily involved in the politics of the state that it's like, and, and like you brought up, like I get it, but Beth has been wanting to kill Jamie <laughs> since season three. Like we we've known this and it's, it's not something now that it's like, now it's a little bit of like beating me over the head with it. And the stuff with Jamie and, um, the woman he's sleeping with, which I forget her character's name right now, but she's like a report, like a report. She's the one trying of... to come in and she wants, she wanted Jamie to sue mm -hmm. to be, so they can get the airport bill. And the whole thing with her character now is that she's just like, Oh, like the side character that's now becoming a main plot point. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. It's, it's weird because I just, I was more intrigued in the first half of the season when he, John's becoming mayor and then they have to figure out, how they can make this work with still keeping the ranch, keeping their property, going in their own interests. And then Jamie is kind of this snake in the grass, which he's been throughout the whole show anyway. Mm -hmm. But it's enacting this revenge. And for me, I'd rather see sort of Beth playing in that. I don't want to say playing in the hands of John, but it's like now the whole her whole motive is to just kill her brother. Unless It's they not to protect it. her father anymore. You Unless know? they change it on us and they eventually because – Real, she also hasn't really been with Rip in the first episode. They finally like got back together. They embrace at the end of the episode. Embrace yeah. And, yeah, and he definitely reigns her in a little bit. Like he 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 can talk her down. <clears throat> so maybe all of a sudden she does get a little bit smarter and is like, okay, I can't be actually trying to kill somebody. I need to play chess while he's playing checkers. Yeah, I think a way. This is not a prediction. This is just something that I think I'd like to see. Mm -hmm. I would love to see it, and it would be a very it would be off kilter for his character. But I think Casey's the closest to John in terms of like he follows a lot more of who John was as a character. Like the same wants. Yeah. I would like to see Casey be the one to off Jamie. I don't know if they go that route. I mean, did you watch the like pre I didn't. preview I at didn't, all? No. Okay. Okay. Um he so gets, I have no gets, idea where they're he going. He gets very heated, is all I'll Casey say. does? Yeah, they show a okay. lot of scenes of him getting very hyped. Which I think is good. I think that it we haven't seen. I think Luke Grimes is is really good in this show. I love him. I do too. And I think that we haven't seen a lot. Like last season was all about the spirit or the first part of this. I keep saying last season because it was it's fucking two years season. ago. But Casey was involved a lot more with the spirituality. And obviously, losing a child mm -hmm. and and trying to find like his uh not his ob like his literal roots, but his, his roots through marriage of like his Navajo roots with with his wife uh, Monica, but. Which, by the way, because this is just on my mind now because I brought this up. The other thing that was fucking crazy to me is that because two years have fucking passed, Tate is huge. His voice has changed. He's so much fucking taller. And the only passage of time is six weeks. Mm -hmm. Six weeks. Get the fuck out of here. You just He's have like, to go with it. I, but – it's just crazy. I get it because they they have no other way Listen, to go. Some boys like grow like that. You never six know. Weeks? You never know. It's six growth weeks. Spurt. Growth spurt. It was crazy. His whole voice changed. He's like, mom. I know. And now they have like this weird address of him being like, ew. Like, yeah, he's, like, he's like, ew, mom. Don't... Why are you kissing dad? It was just like, it's like, this is so not. And she's like, Tate. She's like, you're going to know about this eventually. You might as well learn now. It's like... And it's like, ugh. Yeah, ugh. it's like some, there was some, there was certain writing in this that like. It was it was that part of it that was like corny, but then there's also like the weird pandering thing of like the cowboy culture, like oh my god, the one line which I hate again because I love Rip, but it was just like when um the little boy's like uh which was also funny because little boy's like can I pet the horse and the boy doesn't pet the horse, which I also thought was funny, but the boy's like see I told you there was cowboys, and he's like well maybe one day there won't be, and I well, was just like so I feel like that's the whole like okay so for me my whole point of view of Yellowstone because I binged it. It's almost like a love letter to like Western culture and like nature and like, I don't know, cowboys essentially. Yeah, yeah. And I think they lost that in the in season four 
which I think maybe is why you didn't like it as much. With the politics getting, it, yeah, they it lost. did start to beat you over the head with, again, they're more angling for political position rather than the show being about this. This world yes. and like this bubble of living on a ranch and living in a time that nobody really lives in anymore. Yeah. And I think there's like, ooh, we need to bring that back in. And so I feel like Rip's character is definitely going to that be that person that's like we need to preserve this because nobody else is going to and that's also like when he runs into the like old cowboy who's making the spurs in texas who's 100 percent a real <laughs> cowboy because there's no way he was an actor also could not understand a single word a that he single said. word coming out of his <laughs> like my mom and brother were saying the same thing before I we started recording like, they were like i literally time? couldn't hear it we like had to rewind it no like i did times. i just went past it i was like he probably said something nice <laughs> But no, I do understand what you're saying. And I think that within the first three seasons too, and Gil Birmingham's character, um, Thomas Rainwater mm -hmm. was kind of that. I mean, he's also an activist, but he he's a politico for the native Americans in the, in Yellowstone. And I think that bringing in the outsider characters to be the political side of it worked so much better than trying to get all of them involved. And like, even like, again, Jamie was the one in the family that they would be political. had. And they were like, you're the one that we use to angle what we want to get out of it. And yeah, I mean, his whole storyline with his dad didn't work for me. It didn't work for a lot of people. I don't think. And Wes Bentley's getting torn apart. You were, you were, you were ripping up Jamie before He's, we started recording. And I get it. His character to me is not supposed to be likable, but he is the least likable person in the cast for me, which is funny because you kind of like his character. Don't I you? just am interested to see where they're going to go with him. I think that, I think that his character's gone through the most since the beginning. He's just such a whiny but little, I get like, it. bitch. <laughs> he really is. <laughs> like, he's literally like, oh, my God, like, my dad's dead. And the lady's like, you literally called for that. And he's like, I didn't. But I did. Yeah, and it's that, like, that, that scene was crazy. What? She's like, she's like, she's like, we discussed this, and this is what you wanted. And he's like, yeah, we talked about it once. And he's like, but I didn't really mean it. Yeah, it's it and is she like her face is all of our faces of being like, is this man like delusional? Like he gave a hit. Of course, she's going to go follow through with it. She's not just talking about killing someone for no reason. Yeah, exactly. I think it's I think that's also part of it, too, where I feel like maybe that kind of it's not that it wasn't bubbling and building, obviously, but it did feel. And again, because they had to kill him. What are they going to do? They well, yeah, cost her back. Yeah. But like that also felt like it was just so quick. OK, but so. So quick, but now we're also jumping back six weeks to show the progression of how they got to that point. Well, do you think they're going to do that narratively throughout the whole season? Uh, No, I think that the next episode is going to start at six weeks earlier. Okay, so and then taking I, us back to the campsite where, where and Rip and Teeter and Ryan and everybody else I mean, is. maybe not, though, because how much can they really show up the six weeks? Them just sitting there camping and getting, and just getting bit, bit by scorpions. <laughs> So maybe not. Maybe they were just showing it to. I don't know. I don't know either. I, I mean, uh, that's where I think. That's where I think the show has lost me. We were talking about this before we started recording. For anybody who's watching this, and it, like I just got off watching the Penguin, which is it's HBO. It's it's high value. It's all this stuff. And then I'm like, oh, I'm returning to Yellowstone. And then I had a little bit of excitement in me because I'm also like, I am so curious on how they're going to handle this. Do you think you were going in like more positive than negative? I think episode? I was going in open minded. Oh, see, I was going in with a negative tone. Okay. Because like even go going into season five, like the first half of season oh, okay. five, I was like, I'm not excited for this. Mm. And it's been so much time that we've been away from this world where I'm still like, yeah, sometimes I like to hang out with Lloyd on a Sunday night. Like, why not? Hey, what's up, Tater? <laughs> like, I love, like, it's just. There's certain characters that I that They're I really like. They're heartwarming. Yeah, too, yeah. And the one thing which I discussed too, which I want to hear from people whoever's watching this in the comments, because like losing John was one thing, but then it's like Jimmy was one of my favorite characters in the show, and when he leaves the farm, it's like fuck, man. Like he, like Jefferson White's so good in this role, and like he's like the lovable idiot, and then like Rip is really whipping him into shit. Like their relationship, Rip and Jimmy's mm -hmm. relationship was so great for me and like then they obviously shifted to the rip having the romantic entanglement with with beth which i think works really well some people cling on to that more than others but we get to the quad sixes in this episode because they're traveling to texas and i'm like oh my god we're gonna see jimmy and then they get it like it, they give him shots like it's like single shots of jimmy on the horse 
And I'm like, oh my God, Rip and Jimmy are like come back together. Like, this is going to be cool. Like, they're going to have a moment. It's so passed over. And it's just like, I don't understand. Like, this was one of the central characters of the show not two seasons ago. Mm -hmm. And now you're literally in the same playing field as him. Like, you're there on the farm with him. And they just give him another scene where it's like, you're an idiot, Jimmy. And he's like, oh shit, I gotta go. And that's it. And I'm just like, fuck, man. Like, I don't. I don't like that. Like to me, it's because underwritten. you want Jimmy's character to show that he's grown more. Or... I would have liked to see, have seen that. I mean, could you get a little bit of it? Like, I think it's he, he gets like a solo episode, I think towards the end of season three, where they really showcase like him. Well, sh he's with like a new girl. He has like a new yes. girlfriend. Yes. And, and he's learning like what it's like to be on the quad sixes and all that stuff. But like, for me, it's like, you have so much passage of time, literal time end time in your story mm -hmm. where nobody has seen Jimmy and like you would think that they would someone would have more of an interaction with him and they just don't but I guess that's not really a part of Rip's character either like that's not who he he's is he's not a very talkative character I would say but they by showing him in the first episode it could be that once they find out that John's dead he comes back to help them with the ranch I'm back on board now there you go that's if Jimmy is Jimmy back, to be back on the ranch. the ranch then I am back in he might be and to the extent of like not making him the full like idiot they do make the joke of him being like oh my god my ride's leaving but then clearly shows that he knows what he's doing oh yeah because he didn't even know how to ride a horse yeah because he didn't even know how to ride a horse yeah. and then all of a sudden they're like oh you better hurry up if you can and he like hauls ass yeah yeah so i don't know i feel like they were teasing us a little bit with his character okay. all right so overall where, where what are you what are you feeling right now with this show where are you excited for what we're gonna get next week in this season i'm gonna take a look and see if it's confirmed on how many episodes we're getting okay. i just i'm a little more hesitant and i think we talked about this like i have watched the show week to week since 2018 mm -hmm. i checked so 2018 is when the show came out that's a, that's a long time oh we've God. been with these characters for six fucking years and for me it's like I just feel like there was a bit of a quality dip when you start getting to season four. If I look on IMDb, like, so season one, you're in like the eights for pretty much every episode. Season two, again, eights, the lowest at like a nine. You get a, a nine episode in there. Season three, same thing. You get a couple sevens then, but then the final episodes, you get an 8.8 .8 and a 9.2. Season four, the premiere is a 9.3. Then... It starts dipping. Then you get to the sevens. Then you get to the low eights. The finale of season four, 8.2. Lowest Which finale I agree, they ever I had. agree with that, though, because it really didn't feel... Or actually, no, this is season four. No, we're on season five. And then season five, it's dipping even more in terms of the scores. Okay, so season five, episode eight, what was the score? Like 7.9. I agree, because it literally didn't feel like an actual ending. It yeah. just felt kind of like... And now we're all doing our thing, everyone. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I will tell you that it is a shorter season, but not by that many episodes. How many, but it is. How many episodes? So are we have do? one, two, three, four. We have five episodes left after this episode of the season. So it's a six episode instead does of. Does that make you feel eight. better? I feel good about that. It does. I'm I'm a little more hesitant because again, the thing. Well, not hesitant in terms of the running, but it's like. I wish they were able to tell a complete story. And to me, and this is maybe Costner's fault, obviously, but it's like, it just feels rushed now. I don't know, because like, I don't know, it makes it feel really realistic because people do just like, like die sometimes, yeah. you know? And so, and I said this before, before we started recording, it gives me a little bit of succession vibes, as in now the children are just forced to take um, like the net underneath what their father built and see what they can handle. And honestly, I don't know if these people will be able to handle it and if all shit is just going to go loose. Uh, but I mean, I, I'm excited. I went in really low for this episode and I came out pleasantly surprised. Okay. Well, my other thing I have for you mm -hmm. is that, and we can speculate because you're not going to be on next week's episode for this because oh, you're yeah, not going to yeah. be here, but mm -hmm. I'll cover it and we'll continue to cover it until the end. But there's no confirmation on what is going to happen. There's been a lot of speculation on a lot of different things. About, like story-wise? Yeah, with Yellowstone in general. Uh, initially, they were saying that they were going to bring in a new person to buy the ranch, and everyone was going to stay, and the person that was supposed to buy the ranch was going to be played by Matthew McConaughey. That's <sighs> been rumored. Whoa. That's been rumored whoa, for a while. Whoa, whoa. But there's also another show now that is called The Madison that is filming. Mm. It is based in the same world. Taylor Sheridan is creating it. 
this is I'm just going to give you the pl- the synopsis and then I'm curious on how because I think it's supposed to interweave with the Yellowstone proper and I don't know how they're going to do that because all the other Yellowstone adjacent shows have all been prequels mm. like 1883 1923 these are like yeah. decades ahead right so a New York family's life unravels after a tragedy as they process grief while vacationing in rural Montana exploring human connection amidst profound sorrow so I wonder if these characters are somehow also related or they know John and that's the that's the tragedy they're dealing with. I don't know. No, I hate that if it is. Yeah. If that's like well, a crossover. The lead character and actress in the series is Michelle Pfeiffer. So they already have a big name attached. Uh, Patrick J. Adams from Suits, mm-hmm. who's hot because mm-hmm. of Suits, is also in the show. As is Matthew Fox, best known for Lost. Yep. Uh, Bo Garrett, Amaya Miller, and L. Chapman are the rest of the cast as of now. So... Where do you want to do you like my question is if they end the show with this season, right? They have to continue on because these characters are going to keep living on. So do you think they go in a direction where they maybe just follow Rip and Beth? Do you think they rename the show entirely and it becomes this whole new thing? Because I don't think they're continuing with Yellowstone after this season. I think as me as a person End it when it ends. Like, end this show after this season. Because I think it got really messy in the last two years. Um, and two I, seasons. Or the last two seasons. <laughs> three se- years. Yeah, but three years. Jesus. Um, and I don't know. I just feel like end something when it's really good. Not when people start being like, this is bad. End it now. Yeah. And if they want to do a spinoff, okay, go do a spinoff of... Honestly, I wouldn't want to see a spinoff because if you're going to do a spinoff, then you might as well continue the show because how can you have Beth and Rip, but then not have Beth being connected to Casey and Jamie yeah. as siblings? Like she's so much about her family. And then also, I don't think she'd ever leave like that area. So it's not like they can just be going to Texas. I mean, the way I'm thinking that they're going to, do something i mean they already have casey now moving off i mean he's obviously still on the land but he talks about how far it is from everything and monica's like yeah i love that it's not by anything Mm -hmm. and i think they're separating the two purposely purposefully by the end of the show i know i agree i think we're gonna get a a beth and rip led thing i don't hate that but then make it just like a quick season don't make it like a like a mini series make it a mini series yeah make it just something like short and sweet that people are gonna be like yes i loved them romance blah 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 and she's like wild yeah but don't drag it out into a whole other new show that you're trying to squeeze out five seasons because it's just like go make a different show I agree. And he already does. He's yeah. So, so like, go make something else. They, yeah. these, at a certain point, if you're going to close the door on other characters, close them on, close the door on all of them. Yeah. Well, I'm a little bit more lukewarm on the show than you are, but I feel like you've been with it longer. Than I have. Me, so I have a why. long commitment to the yeah. show, but I am intrigued and I'm definitely excited to talk about it with you week to week mm-hmm. to see kind of where we end up with all of this. But let us know in the comments. This was a highly anticipated episode. John Dutton is dead. He's gone. He's done. So you guys got to let us know. Were, are you upset that Costner is no longer a part of the show? Do you think that they handled it the best way that they could? Do you have a suggestion of a different way they could have handled it? Um, we're going to be covering Yellowstone week to week. Liz is not going to be here next week, but I will do solo duty. And then after that, we should be having Liz. I'm pretty sure for every other episode after that. Um, so we'll continue to talk about it with you guys. Um, so we want to have a conversation with you guys in the comments. Be sure to let us know if you can give the video a like as well and subscribe to us at the culture wave media network. We're covering a bunch of things in film and television. Liz is super stoked this month to watch wicked. Um, I'm going to be covering gladiator two in a couple weeks. Um, we have reviews coming out for arcane on Netflix animated show with Vinny and Mark, um, a bunch of other stuff that we're covering for you guys. So stay tuned for that. And you can follow us on social media. If you don't already, all that stuff is under me in the video right now, as well as in the description, we're on Instagram, we're on YouTube, we're on threads, we're on Facebook, we're on TikTok. everywhere. You guys can follow us. So be sure to do that as well. If you guys can just signing off. I am Darian Scalamoni. I am Liz Seiko. And we will see you guys next time. This is The Culture.